Okay, here's a quick video. Um, we have a remote control here that controls a shade that's on one of the dormers on the front of my house. And if you click the button, you notice there's no, the LED does not go off. If I push really hard, oh, there it goes. It will, but it's very intermittent. As you can see, uh, just for giggles, I'm going to point it right up into the camera. And although this is infrared, these cameras do show a little bit of infrared spillover, so I'm going to hit it. There we go. You can see a little bit. Yep, okay. So that's just to kind of verify that the, the emitter seems to be working in there, although you can't see it with the naked eye. The, uh, the cameras um, do uh, have a tendency to, to pick up a little bit of the infrared and show it. So first thing, of course, is, you know, are the batteries any good? Easy enough to check. Get out the trusty fluke. And we should be over one and a half volts. Okay, 1.65. 1.65. Beautiful. All right, so we do have power. It's not the batteries. Uh, I have a good idea what it probably is. Let's put this aside for now. And let's open this up. Now there's no screws. So this is probably, let's get our little spudger tool. See if we can carefully open this up. Let's reveal its secrets. Oh, there you go. I'll be careful because this is an old, Remote. I think the housing is made of ABS, which means it's brittle. Let's see. Oh, there we go. There we go. Let's see if we can do the same on the other side. Almost. And there we go. Hey, and it didn't break anything. Fantastic. Okay, so, all right. So this is very typical. A lot, of, Although this is a very simple remote, this same um, thing that I'm gonna show you can be used on a lot of remotes, um, like uh, TV remotes and such, that have these rubberized buttons on the front. What they are basically is just, it's kind of like a living hinge sort of approach. You have a uh, this supple rubber action here. When you depress or deform, it pushes these little pads forward, as you can see. Boom, boom. Then they snap back when you let go. And unlike a regular switch, which has metallic contacts, this, actually, let's bust out the meter again. Put this on the resistance scale. See that? It's not a great conductor, but it does conduct electricity. So we've got, you know, 150, 560, you know, it depends on how close you put the probes to one another. Eh, 300 and something ohms. Yeah, that's a, it's a rubber material that's been impregnated with uh, something conductive like carbon or some metallic element and that makes the rubber slightly conductive. It doesn't have to be a great conductor because all this is going to do is come down on top of, it's going to come down on top of this, um, see the serpentine contact that's built into the circuit board? That 
There's one for up and one for down. Like I said, this is a very simple control. It only has two, two uh, uh, positions. There's a little mechanical switch in there, so you can switch between different devices. I have to remember to put that back in. Let's just take this right out. There we go. Okay, so here's the circuit board. And you can see there's this uh, serpentine contact um, made up of, uh, it's, it, basically it's set up like this, These, although my, it's not touching. So you have these uh, interlaced um, conductive elements that are built into the circuit board. And then they, uh, it depends upon the remote and its age. Some, you know, some of the old fashioned stuff, they used to silver plate the copper. Uh, sometimes they put a silver bearing um, ink on there that's conductive uh, and they will uh, silk screen that on top. Uh, sometimes it's a carbon-based material, whatever. It's a basically there's a material that's either electroplated or silk screened on top that serves as these interlaced fingers that are close but not touching. When this pad comes down and and shorts out across this area, uh, the circuit, the little microcontroller, it's built into all these remotes senses that. Uh, it will what's called debounce the switch. It'll make sure that if it's a kind of an intermittent contact, it. It cleans up the signal so you get a one shot, you know, up, down, or on, one, two, three, four, whatever the, the remote function is. And um, so that's how they work. But what ends up happening is over time, these contacts can get a little crudded up. And I'm guessing that's what's happening here. Um, I, can, I can test that theory. If I put this back together real quick. Actually, let's just snap this. So if I was to just reassemble that briefly, um, that's not going to work. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, let's try that again. put our batteries back in. Remember we had a problem uh, before. Let me grab something metallic here, just a little screwdriver or something. And I'm just going to short, short these manually with a piece of metal. And we should see this little pilot LED come on to show that it's working. Yep. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with the controller. We already know that that emitter works. There we go, yep. But it is kind of flaky. So my guess is these contacts simply need to be cleaned. So to do that, I'm going to grab an old fashioned pencil eraser. Just clean that up a bit, not too crazy. It seems to be leaving more gunk on there than it's taking off. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Let's do the same here. Remove that battery again. see it brightening up a little bit. I don't know what this material is. I don't know if it's a silver paint or electroplate or whether it's carbon based, but I'm just gently cleaning off the certain air. See it's got a little different sheen to it now. Uh, do the same with this one. Just very gently taking the eraser to this thing. And that looks brighter. You don't want to go too crazy because I don't know how thick this coating is on here. You don't want to strip it all off. Um, I'm just going to clean that up. Okay. Maybe we'll take a little uh, acid brush and some Some 
alcohol. Just gently clean it up. There we go. So it still has a dark appearance to it, but that's probably the coating. I don't want to get into it too deep. I just wanted to shine it up a bit, get the oxides off the surface or whatever it is that's impairing that. Um, also, uh, you know what, let's, uh, in case I got any oils from my finger on there, we'll clean these up too. Okay, try to avoid touching that now. Let's reassemble it. Get the meter out of the way. red window which goes in like so. The LED just peeks out like that. Um, we have this little switch which we said we shall not forget. Good. And I said I wouldn't touch that and then I went and touched it anyway. Okay, batteries. One, two, cover. Now, ah, uh, yes. Now, just a gentle tap sends a pulse out every time. Beauty. Okay, now the question is does it work? Let's find out. Okay, go down. Stop, go up, beautiful. And back down. Nice. Okay, so that's how we clean up an old remote and uh, breathe a little new life into an old crusty remote that might be acting intermittent or stop working. Uh, when the emitter's good and you know the battery's good, uh, sometimes it's as simple as just that uh, cleaning up that rubberized contact on the flip side that you saw uh, and the pad um, on the circuit board that it comes down and makes contact with uh, to form that switch contact. Um, Anyway, hopefully that helped, um, and maybe it'll inspire a few of you to open up your old crusty remotes that are giving you problems and uh, fix it yourself. Uh, hopefully this helps, and uh, thanks for tuning in to Half Moon Tech Labs. We'll catch you later.